What's up, everybody? A spare with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Space Engineers Programming 101. Um, in the last episode, we had a very successful uh, finishing touch on our Sleepless OS version 1.0. And there was a couple ideas I had that I thought about, well, maybe I could jump to some other stuff and work on some small scripts or whatever, but... Ultimately, I ended up deciding on changing over to version 1.5 and continuing developing of the OS. However, um, the version 1 script is on the Steam Workshop now for you to download and use at your leisure. Um, as I said, it's just, uh, you know, I, I have other things that I'd like to do with it. Clean up the code, make it look pretty, you know, all that kind of stuff. And... Um, so rather than moving on to some simple little script and stuff, I still have things I want to do with the OS itself. So I know that this has, this project has overall sort of taken over the, um, the, the series. And do let me know if that bothers you, if there's ideas and things or uh, tasks that you want to see accomplished through scripting or want to know if it can be done or something like that. Uh, do feel free to leave your comments, and if I get enough suggestions for various different things, then I will break away from my OS for a while and do some uh, different suggested tasks or functions or whatever. But until then, as far as my own ideas, I hadn't really thought of anything that I didn't want in the OS. I have other ideas, but they were all like things I wanted to implement into the system. Um, such as improving the functionality with oxygen, oxygen control, more block control, um, adding new menus, cleaning up the code, all that stuff. So I just went ahead and decided to move ahead into version 1.5. Um, so to get things started, I already hit, uh, blah, blah, blah. I already uh, pasted in the latest version to the Visual Studio's copy, just in case it wasn't up to date. And we're going to tab over and work on that. Alright, so we are back over here in uh, Visual Studios, and our oh-so-familiar code is present. Um, there is a couple of things that I wanted to work on, um, and primarily the biggest thing to that uh, was the update selection function. Uh, this is just getting really hard to read and really bogged down. Uh, you can see it's a very long method, and I really would like to break it down into a smaller uh, method. And to do that, I honestly don't know if I can, though. Like, now that I'm looking at it again, I, I had that idea in my head before I started recording of changing up this into a different method. Um, I think what I was going to do was change into... Uh, break it into two sections, and that's primary and secondary. But I don't actually think I want to do that now that I'm looking at how the code's set up. Um, mostly because I have everything set up to be very specific. Like, if it's the main menu, well, you have total main options. If you have, you know, like, it just... I would end up changing it to a bunch of passing calls instead of switch statements, and then doing those switch statements inside the loop anyway or inside the method. So I actually think I'm just going to leave it there. I don't actually think I'm going to mess with that. Originally, like I said, I was kind of like going into this episode thinking I'm going to rewrite that. Um, but I really don't know that there's a more straightforward way to do it. I won't say that's the most efficient, but for me, I think it's the easiest to keep track of. Um, so there's a couple of things that I wanted to... Uh, work on primarily it's stuff with the uh, oxygen controls and things like that. And I have a basic, what was it, under right menu display. Uh, we have a basic setup here to read whether things are working and stuff like that. Um, I do think I want to change these to actual, um, how do you put it, like methods and stuff like that to where it's we can add more functionality to these uh, because currently the controls are all done 
in the update selection method menu. And I don't really like that because like with the vents, I want to be able to turn them on and off, but also be able to pressurize and depressurize. And there's no way to do that because we only have one set of controls, basically. Um, you know, like if select, it's just selecting that item and turning it off. That's not really what I want to see happen. Um, so I think what I'm going to do... Um, so we can utilize selected menu item as the index because we pretty much end up doing that here anyway. Wait, where are we? Where are we actually turning it off at? O2 vents, selected menu, apply actions off. So we're going only by, oh, I see. Hmm. Hmm. That could prove relatively problematic. How is this written out here? That's refineries. Vents custom name to string. So, wait, no, that's just the custom name. That's just the item in question. That's not actually selecting a certain property. So actually, what would probably be the better way to do this is to take out, we'll, we'll experiment with this for vents first. Um, but let's go ahead and comment this out and what we're going to do here is leave everything else the same. Um, but we're going to, this is considered oxygen submenus. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually make a separate um, and let's do something a bit more identifying and we'll say this is oxygen um, instead of submenus let's say uh, let's see if you had main was primary oxygen would be secondary inside the oxygen like O2 vents would be the third layer of controls well, no, no, that would be the second layer. Inside the, so let's say um, oxygen third layer menus. And we'll set up a case here and say O2, um, let's call this, this is specific to vents. So let's say individual vent, individual vent controls. No reason to simplify it now. Uh, and we'll do a switch, I believe. We might not need this at the moment, but, or I think we'll need this down the road. If, if we're gonna set this up right. So for here, let's call, um, I'm trying to remember how I did these transitional menus up here. I'm gonna get back up out of the submenus. Current menu equals, that's what I was looking for. So we'll do current menu equals, this um, and select oh I didn't close that that's good and selected menu equals zero and I don't think we'll have to do anything else because then it'll move into this and for this we'll want to duplicate this um, now, this is going to be the problem of moving through uh, what we have available because we don't have a secondary list to loop through the numbers. So basically, we've got to figure out a new limit. 
Um, and I'm going to say currently the controls I'm looking at are uh, on and off. And now wait a minute, if we selected the individual vent, if that's what this does. Hmm. So So what I'm trying to figure out is the index number in in case that long strange silence wasn't very explanatory. Um because we've been calling everything through the right menu function, which I also think is bad. Uh, that basically we're changing it up in the update selection and then the right menu we're updating this. So, eh, that's not really a good idea then to change selected menu item here because I want to know what vent I'm dealing with. So I don't want to change that. And that was in the wrong spot. I need to change this. Nope. Dang nabbit. Change that. There we go. All right. Um, select uh, at the moment. What do I want this to do? Hmm. This is an interesting predicament. So at the moment, what I'm going to do is change this to. one. If it's greater than one decrement, if it's equal to one, then I want it to, or if it's equal to zero, sorry, I was saying one there. I had one on the brain. Um, so it should be equal to one because one and zero will be the maximum. Yeah. And the reason I say that is because what I'm wanting to do is add a control level of um, having you to be able to turn it off but also be able to mark it for depressurizing. That's the big thing. Um, and then back is going to go to oxygen vent controls. Alright, so now let's get rid of this and what we're going to do is we're going to throw an if statement in here that says uh, if it's equal to zero then we're going to do this. Um, I know, I know, I know. Else that would mean it's equal to one, we're going to do this. Okay, I should comment that but whatever because I'm about to code into it so I don't care. Uh, O2 vents Oh, here's the problem. We used... Ugh. Well, this is problematic. So we're using selected menu item here. But it's in... It's set in this one. Okay, what I can do um, is actually declare a local variable and call this, we'll say integer and we'll call this vent ID equals selected menu item and then selected menu item equals zero. That way we're doing this in a single case under this circumstance. So under this circumstance you've already come from here so it's going to take the currently selected menu item, whatever you ended on, it's going to load that into a um, local variable and then it is going to clear it so now you can use it to move up and down when you get to this part. Then when you select this we can use vent ID Oh, that won't work because it's not global. Dang it. Dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. <sighs> so the reason I said that is because 
if you move this at all, then once it's changed, it's going to continue the run, and then when it loops back through here, the this is going to get cleared to whatever you last selected. Hmm. Now, if this were a global variable, it wouldn't be that big of a deal. But it's not. So the difficulty I'm having here is trying to figure out how to identify the exact vent that I'm using. And this would probably be more simplified if we were passing this information to a method. Maybe. Again, we're dealing with... I, I think the only way I'm going to be able to do this, actually, is to declare this as a global variable, to be quite honest. So let's copy that. We'll get rid of this. Uh, and we don't necessarily want to put this here. Wait. No, we're going to put this up here. And the reason I'm doing that is so that I can, I'm free to clear this in the, um, actually I can clear it right here. There we go. That's better. That way I'm not clearing it every time you run this section, but I'm also, uh, under this we're going to call this vent ID. Okay, so basically what that's doing is it's preventing us from clearing it every time we change the input value, or every time it runs through the loop, rather. Um, now we can do, if it's equal to zero, the first one we're going to do is on and off. Um, so we'll toggle this with on off. Otherwise, we'll go ahead and copy this. I believe it's set to depressurize is the actual action. Okay. Now, we need to copy this because we're going to need a new case. So I think all of that will work relatively fine. And I can go ahead and get rid of this. I'm, I'm pretty sure all of that will work relatively okay. We'll have to test it to be sure, but, and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'll call this third layer um, menus. Um, and then we can start with O2 individual vent controls. Okay. Case. Um, break. Now, let's see. I don't think I will need to do all of that. I think I can just do this from here. Um, and we'll say this is just zero, or no, crap, um, vent ID is what we'll have to use. Oh, it's not capitalized. I was like, what? I'm actually really glad that I made that a, um, global now because I wasn't thinking about how often I'll probably end up having to use that for this menu style. Um... The name doesn't really matter. We can change this because you'll have already seen the name in the previous screen. We also don't need to worry about selection. So tell you what, let, let's actually make this a variable. Um, we'll collapse all these down because I don't need all of them open. And let's reopen the right menu. <laughs> the right menu. And what I'm going to do is copy this out, but we're going to call this into a method. Individual event controls. Oops. 
Okay, now oxygen methods. Again, I'll have to put a, well, uh, let's just call this the same thing. O2, oops, I'm just screwing up here. Third layer methods. Okay, and we can close these math ones and pretty much everything else down here. I don't know why that keeps expanding them. And so first thing we need is O2 individual event controls. All right, let's paste this in. So we don't need the selections because you're, well, yeah, actually we do. So let's go ahead and duplicate this. Uh, we don't actually need a for loop. We can go if selected menu equals zero. We can do um, like this. Well, no, we do want to loop through it actually because we want we don't want to have to write each individual um, option. Oh, I see the problem. The problem is that we have two different options that may or may not. Wait, we don't. <sighs> yeah, we do. Because this is the first time I've actually made two different selectable options. Uh, okay. Mm. All right, then here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're gonna make a uh, we're gonna make two strings hmm. we don't actually need two strings I don't think oh Oh, 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 I know what we can do. Okay, uh, we're gonna use this code down here. Sorry, I apologize if I'm if I'm not taking really, if you're into coding and you're kind of like, this would be easy to do. I'm very tired and it's very late. I tend to record these episodes really late at night for some reason. I don't really know how that happens all the time. Um, what I wanna check is, is there a pressurize setting? can pressurize, can fill the room with air, true, room is airtight, false, room is, wait, oh, true, room is airtight, okay, is pressurized, room can be pressurized, that's not really what I was, can fill room with air, true, room is airtight, false, room is not, that's not really what I was looking for though. I'm looking for if it's got the depressurized tag. Wasn't there a way that I did that in the O2 status setting though? How did I figure that one out? Vents, 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 vents. I just have his working, great. Oh, wait a minute, what about, no, that is the status, dang nabbit. Dang nabbit. So I don't list the, um, I list the pressure in the O2 tanks. I didn't list if it was depressurized or not. Uh, I'm gonna try. Oops, that's the wrong setting. I'm gonna try is uh, or the can pressurize. I think. Get properties. No, that won't. Well, no, that's not what I'm looking for. So let's do can pressurize. Let's see what that does. We'll check that out in game and see what that ends up yielding. Um, and we'll say, hmm, 
Okay, so for this, we don't need the name. We'll say power status. And I'm going to remove the extra spaces in the front. You'll see why in a second. Um, let's see. I can just put the colon here and the space. I don't need all of that. And then is working on or off. Let's do the same thing here. And we're going to say pressure status. And then hopefully this will be pressurized or depressurized. And I don't actually have an airtight room set up, so it, this would actually work for testing to see whether or not this will return true. Now, um, actually, instead of writing this, I need to return it to a string. And I can't spell tonight. Um, let's call this temp string equals. Um, we can cut this part off. Actually, with that in mind, we can make this all one string. You don't have to do it that way. You could do a plus equals and just, you know, bring it down one or whatever. Wouldn't hurt anything. But I'm going to do it this way just for making things easy. I actually do need two different strings. Dang, nabbit. I cannot win tonight. The reason I need two is because you're only going to have one string selected at any one given time. So we'll do temp string two equals pressure status, yada, 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 yada. Okay. Now, we need to change this to one. And... All right, hold on. Let's copy this part because we will need it. I don't think I actually need to do a loop. So if selected equals zero, then we want to write temp string one with um, this in mind. Oh, I gotta take that out. I gotta take this new line character out, actually. That's not going to work. Because we're adding it on here. Um, yeah, so then we do this. New line, true. Okay, there we go. That's the one that we need. Else, if selected um, equals one. And actually, what I need to do is make these into multi-line if statements. Like I said, I'm just missing a lot because I'm tired. Because if this one is selected, then we don't need string two to have the brackets. If it is, then we want it. But we can just write both lines right there. And otherwise, this is the other way around. So it's actually really simple to do that. I don't know why I didn't see it before. Probably because it's like 2 in the morning and I'm just really tired now. Okay. This isn't throwing any errors, so that should work relatively well. Um, I'm going to leave that open because I've been editing on it. Now... Um, the other one the other one that I wanted to work with a little bit is the inventory string stuff. Um, in all honesty, I really don't know how to format it any better, but it definitely needs to be formatted better. <laughs> um, 
this part I think the hard part is with the modded blocks being uh, added to the game there really haven't been a, an easy way to determine um, the number of like um, basically the number of uh, spaces, characters that each line can hold. So it's made for some difficult um, formatting type setups. Uh, which is part of why I haven't really touched this too much and I may not do so either because I really haven't done the research into properly seeing if there's a way to use variables and such to format it uh, more accurately. Oh no, I take that back. That's what I wanted to work on was um, we're going to put this above vent controls. I'm going to call this one O2 uh, individual tank controls because the tanks have a stockpile method or not method, they have a stockpile function. Come on, there we go. Um, so I'm actually going to copy this in here and we are going to change this to stockpile status. Um, I'm of course going to need another one of these and we'll call this int tank ID. Okay. And we'll need to change the tank function down here. I think this the uh, full power and minimum power ended up working out okay by the time we were done with it. I can probably remove this comment here. There we go. Clean up our code a little bit. Alright, so under tank controls, we want to change this to mirror this kind of setup. So current menu equals O2 individual tank controls. Oops, nope, that's a closed line. Um, tank ID equals selected menu item, selected menu item equals zero. And that should... Actually, no, I'm going to copy this one down here because this is further along in terms of being more in line. Uh, and we'll call this... Let's just make sure, even just in case I spelled it wrong. Oops. kind of want to make sure this doesn't change other than tank. Um, and we'll call that... I don't know if it actually has a stockpile action or not. Uh, that'll be something relatively important. We also need to change this to tanks and tank ID. And as long as that doesn't give us any flags, we'll copy this and I'm just doing the whole thing. I don't really need to. Uh, and we'll go back to tank controls. So that should fix uh, update selection for adding the new function. And then under this part we want to add O2 individual tank controls. Um, case uh, actually I can just paste that in and a break line no flags good okay so now in here we will also need to change this to tanks this to tank ID and we can pretty much just copy and place, <laughs> copy and place, well, it's kind of true actually. Copy and paste that there. Uh, oh, this is going to be the oddball. It has no stockpile method. I was kind of afraid of that. All right, well, 
I have that under the tank status, do I not? Filled. Oh no, that's the that's just the filled status. Crap. I don't think I have it. Hmm. Well, this is going to have to be handled with an if statement then. Let's do Let's copy this. Copy that out. And we'll bring this back up. I don't know why I brought it all the way down. And then if, or wait, no. Ah, oh, crap. Um, hmm. Detail input next. Uh, where did that go? Filled. I don't know if this if the tanks are like batteries. They use uh, batteries change the wording. It'll go from depleted to um, like uh, charged or something like that. And so you can always check for the word, but I don't remember if the tanks can do that, but we're going to try. We'll say if um, O2 tanks at tank ID dot detailed info contains um, let's go for Ooh, that's a tough one. Um, let's go for filled in. I don't know if it gives us a time or not. Uh, I don't need that. We can do it like this. Temp string two equals uh, stockpile status. Actually, we don't need any of this stuff. We can say um, storing, maybe, would be a good word. Or stockpiling, I guess. Ooh, um, we'll keep it for now. I could also do something like filling. We could use the exact lingo that the, um, the game uses. single letter. Dang it. I can't use the right case. Um, let's say uh, depleting maybe for now? Or um, using. And this will be stockpiling or we could change it to like storing. Why are you throwing a flag? Oh, there's not enough parentheses. Eh, eh, eh. Okay. Oh. Huh. I did not think of that. Oh, yeah, okay. We can select it and then we can use it. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Never mind. I was concerned that, um... Oh, wait a minute. We don't have it anywhere applying the actions, do we? Oh yeah, we do. Okay. Okay. Never mind. Scared myself. No big deal. Um yeah, so all that should work relatively well. Um let's boot up the game and we'll copy and paste this back over there and see what that ends up giving us as a result. Okay, so I have Le code copied into uh, here. Everything looks like it runs. That's all well and good. Um, I do apologize. I did not remember to turn on the mouse, but we haven't been doing a whole lot in 
game uh, programming wise, so I'm not super worried about it. So let's try vents first. It's still saying on and off because we had it set to, but we do have our pressurized, depressurized status. Now, what I want to actually check is the status. So it is not pressurized. So we can turn it on. What happens if we do this? I set it, but now what? Not pressurized. So we'll remove... Oh, so it's toggled. But it's just not pressurized. Okay, see, that's what I need to figure out what it's doing. So depressurize is off. Depressurize is on. Eh. See, this is a little bit of a problem. Because whether it's not pressurized or not, it's not coming back with uh, the actual controls as far as whether or not it's set to pressurize or not. That's the only thing I don't like about this thus far. Like, if I seal this in, I don't know if it would make a difference because, I mean, typically you're not going to have a vent on the outside of the ship or anything, but, but, you know, still. Um, do I have any conveyor blocks? Let's grab some of those. And if, I'll have to check the audio later, if my microphone drops out or gets quiet or whatever, I've been having problems with it in between this episode. Uh, it was fine when I started, but um, uh, I ended up like moving it or twisting a certain way or something, and it kind of like, um, I wouldn't say broke it, it just, the uh, one of the control sections got like a little loose, and so it's starting to kind of go on me, basically. Um, I think I fixed it for now, but, you know. Okay, depressurizes off. But it's not pressurizing the room. That's so weird. I don't... Like, okay, so to be clear, the controls are working fine. The controls are fine. But it's the um, display that isn't displaying what I exactly wanted it to. And that's the status of the control. So I'm probably not using the right value. Um, but and we can turn that one off. We can go back. This is still reading on and off. We can, we can remove that later. Um, but we can go kind of back and forth and adjust things. So this will actually give us access to individual items. Um, oops, too far back. And stuff like that, so that's cool. Now, the moment of truth is the stockpile one here. We're using... where's tank one? Oxygen tank one. So it is not set to stockpile. Uh, does not seem like there's a filled in, nor does this change. So I will more than likely end up having to alter my code, because I doubt that's actually going to work. Oh, stockpile is on. Stockpile is off. Okay, so the controls work, it's display. Um, the can stockpile thing or the filled in is uh, can depressurize is not working correctly and the um, filled in is not working correctly so I am going to have to man I don't know what to use on the tank like I want access to these whether these are on or off um, that's the state that I need to find basically uh I'm sure there's a way to access it through properties or something like that. I'll just have to do some research and actually identify what, in fact, that is. Um, so, on that note, I think I am going to wrap up this episode. Again, um, if you guys have suggestions that do not relate to um, 
the OS system or anything like that, and you still want to see them done, do let me know. Um, the Otherwise, you know, if you have suggestions for the OS system, that's fine too. You can leave those as well. Uh, I'm perfectly okay with that. Um, so, anyways, on that note, leave your suggestions in the comments if you like or message me, whatever, doesn't matter. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.